Hi, my name is Jeff Budzinski. I'm a software architect at Yahoo. And here up on the stage with me is Joshua Harlow, Hi. lead programmer on the OpenStack project at Yahoo. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we're using OpenStack at Yahoo and uh, give you a little bit of background on some of our use cases, some of the challenges we've encountered, and where we're going with the project. So first of all, I want to sort of set some uh, dimensions of sort of the problem that we're tackling at Yahoo. So when, when we talk about infrastructure at Yahoo, Yahoo, we're talking about some fairly large numbers to support this kind of audience. We're the top-ranked internet audience, over 800 million monthly users, global, uh, across many countries, many languages, and we're mobile, 300 mil 390 million mobile users. In terms of the scale behind that, if you look at any one of the web properties or mobile experiences, we're talking huge numbers, millions, always in the millions, a uh, huge amount of storage, huge amount of user activity, and in order to get OpenStack deployed across our entire infrastructure, it needs to be able to scale to these dimensions. And not only scale, but grow. We're growing rapidly, 25% jump in on-page interactions, and that's kind of typical across uh, the breadth of our properties and mobile applications and so forth, we're seeing tremendous growth. And it's not only growth in terms of traffic, it's also growth in terms of developer talent behind all of those experiences. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've been making a lot of acquisitions for talent over the last uh, year, and we've been hiring tremendous number of uh, developers, and that's what sort of makes it all work, those developers. And what those developers, of course, want is power, more of it, more network bandwidth, more compute power, more storage. It's never enough, right? Yeah, yeah, never. Whenever you're, uh, whenever you're a developer, you always want more resources. The company can never give you enough, even at Yahoo. It's like we always, we're always hoarding hardware and that sort of thing. And that's where OpenStack comes in. We've deployed OpenStack on three continents, over a half dozen data centers, many clusters. And with OpenStack, we're providing that compute resource, that power to those developers so they can bring uh, the new experiences to the world. In terms of our use cases, the place we started was in a thing called Open House. Every developer at Yahoo today gets automatically onboarded to one of our development clusters that are spread across the world. Asia, Europe, North America. A developer can, create res can acquire resources and do development on any of those clusters across the world. This has been, it's been huge, right? Been huge. I can give a little more details, yeah. Sure. We set up this with Horizon. As you can sort of see, the front page, uh, first page here looks like Horizon. Uh, we spread it. There's a good have a certain quota for the number of developers that we want to allow them access to. Uh, they've been very responsive to it, like gives them instant access to virtual machines, which is something they never really had before. Uh, so they've been very happy with having to get rid of desktops in a way. They're able to provision these VMs in, in seconds when they want to just try out a new application or try out a new package. Uh, they've been very, very happy that we've been able to provide that. Something that Yahoo has tried and it has really succeeded this time. And we've got a lot of great feedback for that. So this website really starts to help make that, like the initial steps into the developer lifecycle in a way. Yeah, yeah and, and developers love it. They've been thrilled. It's, you know, used to be when you came into Yahoo, you'd get this underpowered Linux box underneath your desktop. I think by the time, by the time you got it all hooked up, it was already obsolete, you know, like two gig of RAM, dual core, and it's like, you know, whatever OS was on it, when you got it, that was kind of where it stuck. And now it's just like, you'd be surprised. Something as simple as this has just been transformational, really. And the developers now are like, most, the most common request is, how can I get more quota? I just want more. And of course, you know, the way they used to hoard hardware, people like Josh, of course, uh, now they're doing that with VMs. But that's, that's great. That's what it's there for, and we're pretty happy about that. Some of the other uh, use cases that we've initially tackled, uh, CI is a natural, the variable loads as developers sort of come into work and check things in and need to do builds on commit and so forth. Uh, OpenStack is a natural for that. Uh, the elasticity and the flexibility to accommodate these workloads. 
Another thing um, you can imagine that we need to do a lot of is browser validation. You know, whenever one of those new web experiences is uh, created, there's a tremendous number of uh, uh, browsers that we have to do backward compatibility testing on. And that's something where OpenStack has been a great fit. You know, we, we've plugged Windows into the OpenStack infrastructure, and we've got uh, a lot of uh, validation testing going mm -hmm. on effectively. So that's been awesome. And finally, you know, aside from the sort of the internal tools and sort of the data use cases, we've had a lot of those. Um, on the data side, it's sort of early days still. Um, and it is so as well with production. So now when you go to Yahoo, potentially you're actually going through an OpenStack cluster when you're getting that user experience. We've sort of been applying it to, you know, you know, sort of, it's still early days, and we've sort of been applying it to things like peak and seasonal loads and so forth. But the goal here, as we get more experience and more confidence in the system, is to roll it out across the entire Yahoo infrastructure. So you can imagine the scale of that and, uh, you know, sort of some important characteristics that we're going to need as we're doing that, that we want to get to. And that's where I'm going to talk to the challenges a little bit. So. You can imagine, you know, if, when, you go to a, when you go to a web page on Yahoo, you can imagine maybe you're just getting some content from a web server. But it's, of course, it's, not, it's much more complicated than that. Uh, an application, you know, say finance or sports or something like that, is comprised just in a single cluster of many thousands of hosts. And you're in, engaging, uh, your request will spawn off many other requests to a, a, deep stack, a deep and wide stack of systems. And so the scale of that, is something that OpenStack needs to handle. That kind of an application cluster, you know, a couple of thousand hosts, that's kind of the size of a lot of people's OpenStack clusters in general. So we're trying to build to a much larger scale, and we've had some challenges along the way. And as part of that scale also, you've got a dimension of elasticity. You can imagine traffic spikes when there's a big news event might result in, you know, a need for significantly more resources. And so OpenStack, uh, as we get further down into the production use cases, these are some of the things we needed to solve for us and that we're working on. Reliability is huge. I think everybody feels that way. But when you're sitting in front of a lot of consumers and your revenue model is based around advertising, when you give a user a 500 or a site's not available, you're effectively not able to pay the bills. So reliability is really crucial for us. And again, you know, going back to that elasticity part of the equation, if we're trying to spin up a lot of instances to meet some type of uh, surge in demand, the system needs to be able to respond as well. And we have had some challenges can, yeah. in reliability. I can, I can talk a little bit about, about Yeah, sure. So we've, we, there's some interesting situations that I think that we've had to handle that probably I mean, most people have had here as well. Like we've had, if you use your uh, cluster backed by QCOW images, you sort of have to deal with power failures. We've had some issues with that that is being worked through in the community, I think, as well with QCOW corruption, uh, those kind of things. We've had to build automated tools around to help repair them. Uh, consistency of state is a big thing that I've been working on, and as well, I think Yahoo and others. That to help improve the reliability of the whole system. So we're trying to build out some libraries. I've been working in the uh, Havana cycle and Icehouse cycle to do that kind of stuff. Uh, there's going to be a session later on that as well. So that will, overall, in the end, it will help make this a uh, really high reliable system that everybody can depend on, because we definitely need to. And the reason why this is important, when you think about the way, the way we're running OpenStack, so we're from an infrastructure team. You know, we provide this compute resource for people. Uh, how they're using it, you know, we have no idea, effectively. We've got, you can kind of think of Yahoo as a large collection of startups. You've got a lot of independent entities that are all iterating on their application stacks independently. So it's not like we can go and tell them, you know, like, oh, we're shutting down the cloud, you know, go use the other data center. Yeah, the applications are sort of built for reliability and high availability and all that good stuff. but. The foundation has got to be a solid infrastructure. We're coming from a hardware world. There's expectations that are built in to a lot of the applications. Um, just, it's just sort of legacy. And you know, obviously, we're not going to be at that same level with uh, cloud. It's kind of a, a contract that is kind of 
you don't want to set those expectations, but still the, the reliability is very important. We can potentially be impacting a lot of users if we have in infrastructure problems that are sort of uh, due, to, due to our implementation. And then operability, you know, uh, again, with so many data centers and so many clusters in the data centers, and the fact that we can deploy OpenStack at sort of a, a constrained size in terms of hypervisors, that, that gives us some challenges as well. Our ops team is sitting here, uh, some of our ops folks are sitting here <laughs> in the front row, and they're probably not exactly thrilled with the number of clusters that we have, and it's a, it's a pretty big burden on them to do some of the upgrades, and maybe you want to talk a little yeah, bit sure, more sure. about that. So, uh, some of the challenges that we've focused on, you know, the office people have done a great job, so thank you up in the front. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, there's some things, there's a lot of things that you have to sort of adapt to when you're running an OpenStack cluster, and just in virtualization in general, and it's been, it's been challenging for a lot of us, but some things like how to tune KVM, how to deal with memory restrictions, quotas, and when Linux isn't very happy, it will eventually, uh, in, when it's pushing its memory boundaries, it will eventually just kill one of the VMs at, almost at random. So there's certain aspects of the system that are, are new to us, I think, and new to people that have been used to bare metal, that you, you have to, a lot of knobs to turn. So you can turn, you can turn your KVM, tune your KVM performance, you can tune uh, your memory performance. So there's a lot of new things that we're learning as we go through this process. Uh, there's quota consistency issues that we've hit. I think other, it's been getting better in Ice House and Havana. So there, there's lots of uh, different backends for the virtualization drivers. There's all, all these kind of things, all these moving parts. So it's good in a, it's good in a way that it helps the very diverse community, but it is also, we need to, there, once you have all those knobs to turn, you need to come to a standard set of what is the best set of knobs. So those are uh, issues that we've had to deal with. Our ops people have been very helpful in understanding that, and we, have, we as developers have also tried to make that uh, easy for people to use, I hope. Uh, another thing that we've had is upgrades. Like we, we've been running about three or four versions of OpenStack, and we've done live upgrades, which means we're not turning off VMs, to like to and, and shifting over to a whole another cluster. So that brings into whole packaging concerns and how do you how does your package not corrupt the VM state? How does it migrate the database correctly? So there's been a great a great work in the community to make that possible, and it's been very it's been very interesting to push that boundary at least internally try to establish all these processes around RPM upgrades, uh, package upgrades, and testing. A lot of it's involved a lot of testing from our QE folks as well to make sure that when we do an upgrade from, say, Essex to uh, Folsom or Folsom to uh, Grizzly, that nothing is actually destroyed in that process. And, it's, and we have, we've been doing good so far, so I'm proud of that. <laughs> So yeah, so all these sort of all these kind of challenges that we've had to work through, I think the community is starting to realize that it needs to become a little bit easier. And I think and I'm, gonna, I'm glad that that's happening, and I'm really thankful for everybody for making that possible. Yeah. So in the long term, what we'd really like to get to is like to get to a nice balance between sort of the right number of clusters in a given data center. Not too many, not too few. You know, there's good reasons to have more than one, uh, but we don't like a, one hundred, let's say. Um, so that's something that we're very interested in working with people to solve, and we'll be doing some work uh, to solve it ourselves. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a sec. Uh, some, other, some other challenges, simple things like cloud transformation. You know, we're a fairly mature company. Uh, people have sort of a, the contract or the life cycle of hardware in mind when they get VMs. It sounds kind of crazy, but, it, but it's true. And so trying to change that mindset a little bit of a challenge. And also a lot of the infrastructure tools, the things we put around OpenStack, again, those were designed with hardware life cycles in mind. You know, you sort of do batch things to hardware. And that doesn't really quite work in an on-demand world. And we've been working to change some of that internal stuff at Yahoo. And of course, we love the community. We've had great success on, on Hadoop as Yahoo. Um, we're sort of synonymous with Hadoop in a way. Um, and we're, but, we're, but on the OpenStack community, you know, we're still learning how to be effective. Uh, but we are contributing. Uh, we've been very active in the foundation. Sean Roberts here uh, is sort of leading the charge, both in the foundation for us and on community. We hold uh, meetups at Yahoo regularly, have large user groups, and we want to help build that community. We think that's healthy for OpenStack, and if it's good for OpenStack, it's good for us. And of course, we're tr contributing code. Maybe not as much as we'd like to. We'd like to contribute more code, and we're working pretty hard to do that. And we're building out our teams and growing our teams, and we'll be doing uh, more code commits. 
here at the summit, we've got a lot of, a lot of people present. I think we've got 15 or 20 Yahoos here. They're wearing purple shirts. You should go and harass some of them and ask them about Yahoo. I'm sure they all love that. In the front that. row. Um, they can tell you a little bit more about what we're up to. Uh, and folks like Josh are doing some talks this week. Yep, a couple Before of you talk about that, oh, though, right. let's move forward and talk about where we're going because I'm running out of time. So first off, the way we view, we, way we view OpenStack is it's not just for VMs. We're very interested in the bare metal. We're leveraging some of the bare metal stuff, and that's pretty important. There's always use cases that you know, are very performance sensitive and where bare metal allocation makes sense. And so we're, we're already using that stuff. Lightweight containers, I think, are huge. Uh, you know, we, we don't really run, you know, in a way, you don't, we're not a public cloud, we're not selling a product per se, and we don't have untrusted workloads. Lightweight containers represent a pretty appealing um, place to run compute jobs without much of the overhead there. So that's, that's pretty important to us. And then some of these other things like uh, load balancing to give us that elasticity database. And then maybe Josh, you can talk yeah, sure. about a couple of these other things. So yeah, I'm doing a, I've been doing for the last at least six months this, this project. You may have heard about Passflow, which is trying to sort of organize workflows for different parts of OpenStack. Uh, it's getting some success there. I think there's a session actually after this about it with Glance. So there's also a talk tomorrow uh, and a couple other sessions on the, on the design summit. You can check that out. Uh, We've done some also some work internally on fault detection and this self-healing concept where we need to, instead of getting uh, customers that would basically complain to us via bugs or other contact points, we want to try to predict that before they, before they like open a bug to say there's a problem here. So there's these automated tools that we're building, and hopefully open sourcing, that we can actually do some of this self-healing or fault early fault detection uh, on behalf of our users instead of having to wait for our users to actually report that. Uh, upgrade information, upgrade is sort of expected. Uh, there's been a lot of work that we've done, I think, as well, and others have done around the whole upgrade of OpenStack and sort of the processes that are involved there. Uh, hopefully we can get more public with that, uh, at least I'd like to, and we can I try to make sure the community is healthy in that area. So yeah, there's lots of stuff going on. So check Yeah, out. I mean, I think we'd love to, obviously love to work with the community on a lot of this stuff as well. Uh, Josh is already working with a lot of people on the task flow stuff. Uh, you know, we try to share whatever we think applies or is, is worth mm -hmm. sharing with a larger community, especially on the upgrades. I mean, I think this is a pretty critical area. Anybody who's running a cloud needs to, you know, manage sort of the chaos of the upgrades. And, you know, with sort of the agile mindset of today, you want to do, be doing more frequent releases. I know Rackspace has kind of solved it. I'm not quite sure sometimes how they do it. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting there, but uh, we think there's a lot of stuff that needs to go into the system to help make that possible. So it's kind of a short talk. You know, it's only 20 minutes, a little bit of a teaser. Um, <laughs> we're going to try to take a couple of questions here. So if you want to go up there and uh, ask a question, that'd be great. Otherwise, uh, you know, please attend one of our other talks or design sessions. Uh, harass the Yahoos that are here in the front row and ask them about Yahoo and all that. And uh, drop by our booth. We'd love to talk to you. Yep. And uh, anything else, Josh? I think we're good. Want to open up for Q and A? Yeah. Anybody have any questions? You put us on the spot. Tough, tough ones are okay. Maybe. What a shy, shy audience. Oh, one more thing I did want to mention, actually, while I'm up here. Uh, if you stay in the hall after this, uh, Yahoo Japan is going to be here talking about some work that they're doing with Brocade on Elbaz. That's load balancing as a service. So that should be pretty interesting. And. Uh, if there's no questions, I think we're going to sign off. Anybody? Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys.